Let's give this a go. Oh, welcome everybody. Yeah, it's very, very windy. That palm tree on the camera looks like it's not fighting as hard as it is in real life. It's pretty bad. And there's no place in my patio where I can feel like there is no wind. So <laughs> I do want to welcome you to this episode of Blooms for You. I've got cousin it here really, really holding on doing still really well, bless him. I had to take the glasses off because they would kept blowing off. Not a good thing. He would not be well pleased if his glasses broke. I'm gonna keep this short and simple. Cousin It is still showing off and he's blooming for everybody that is not mentioned here today, but is watching this video. I do have an update that I want to do on him. I'll see how the wind goes and maybe I'll I'll let you know at the end. But for now, let's go and see who's blooming. And while we're here bracing the wind, look at that Cymbidium back there. She's a no ID, but that's where we're headed. There she is. I've had to sit down for this one simply because of the angle of the blooms. But I feel that we can really see her much better from this angle because I do not spike my Cymbidiums I try to stay away from spikes in general. I just don't know, unless I already have a support in the pot, I don't want to put a spike in to the pot and then, you know, puncture the roots on its way down. Gorgeous, gorgeous cymbidium, I must say. And I call her beach balls because of how her buds represent, you know, the old age beach balls, I guess in the 70s or 80s. They were these plastic balls with their little wedges of color and i think that these buds actually bring that at least i remember them when i look at these buds so i would like to say that the first two spikes the third one isn't quite open but before the rain comes and ruins the first two spikes that have been now been open for the majority a good part of four days i would like to say to nuroa arkel and Jenny S, thank you very, very much. I am so sorry, but this is what it is when you grow outside. I apologize, but Nuora, I hope I say your name right, and Jenny S, I have my first two Cymbidium spikes that I want to dedicate to you to say thank you so very much for your support on my channel. Look at that. Oof. And she is a small cymbidium even. And Jenny S as well. The first time I saw you was on the delinquent fowls video. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you've also seen that my fowls are not that delinquent anymore. They have come quite a ways in the months that I've been doing videos. And I'm getting, I'm getting the hang of them, let's just say. <laughs> For lack of a better term. <laughs> but yeah, but to both of you. To both of you, Nuroa, I'm going to try that again, Nuroa, Arkel, and Jenny S. Each of you a spike of my beautiful No ID Cymbidium that I lovingly call Beach Balls. And she lives outside all year round, so she is a bit of a tatty looking plant, but my goodness, when she blooms. Let me get you in a bit closer. Gosh, I love this color combination. I did not see her on the bench with blooms. She was a rescue. She was small. So I thought, yep, I'm going to have a Cymbidium in my life. And it's this one. Thank you, both of you, Nuroa, Arkel, and Jenny S, for your support here on my channel. going to take a long look at these blooms. I'm not going to insist that we stand here four months because they won't last that long, but that's how long it took for these spikes and buds to open on this Murasaki Komachi, Zagonesia Murasaki Komachi. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What a trial that was. But here we are finally. 
I have seven blooms. Unfortunately, I lost a bud. My resident gecko thought it needed it more than I did. Miscalculated the jump. Has never seen this bloom in spike in its location. Surprise, surprise. It hasn't been in bloom for me since I got it. I would like to dedicate these two spikes to Michael McCarthy and to Marcus Zian or Zin. I will put the names up on the screen because I think it's just fitting that I say a very, very big thank you to Michael McCarthy for being so patient with these blooms <laughs> from a distance. Imagine me in front of it every single day thinking that one day they are going to open. <laughs> Michael McCarthy, I dedicate a spike to you of my Saigonicia Murasaki Komachi. Now I am at a weird angle, and that is because these blooms open up towards, oh, towards the sky pretty much. So we are kind of perched on a pedestal and the camera is pointing way down to get into there. Michael, thank you ever so much for your patience, your guidance, your support, your generous sharing of your knowledge to all of the orchid community, for the dialogue and everything so far on my channel. I cannot express to you how much I appreciate you, and I cannot express to you either how grateful I am that I have met you via this platform. Thank you so very, very much, Michael. I, I, I really appreciate it, I really do. Marcus Zian, I have seen you on my channel, not much, but never mind that. I hope that you will see this video, even though it is a breezy day and it's quite noisy in the background. I need a flag hoisted to say I am filming. Would everybody just please be quiet? But hey, Zygonisio Murasaki, the second spike, Marcus Zian is for you to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. So early on, it is so very much appreciated. It's difficult for me to describe. Take my word for it. I say it, I mean it. I am now going to reposition the camera a little bit and let's have a look at the whole orchid. That might be a better perspective now. I know we're not staring right into the blooms. We can get back to that, but I just wanted to show the entire orchid and she seems to be a small orchid but boy those spikes are long they're at least 60 centimeters long and just just for four blooms or respectively three blooms this is quite something i have to say i'm super pleased that i see this orchid in bloom again simply because it was a trial a chore it was difficult to get her acclimated into this lecker and self-watering really really had a tough time i did a care collab video on her so i will link that in the description below but uh, yeah she's doing fabulous fabulous and i'm so pleased by the way the fragrance i can't detect much currently she's in my indoor blooming alley so i can't detect much but if i were to hedge a bet i i, I feel like there is a note of rose something like that, a, a rose kind of fragrance, but nothing that would say, okay, there's this, that, or something else to it. It's just a rose, but not very, very strong. So gentlemen, these two spikes are for you. Thank you so very, very much. Can you believe it? I can't. This is Catlia Zymi's doll kiwi. Two blooms, and we've only got into February. This is a winter growth. I have never in my life had two blooms on this orchid from the summer growth. Everybody else thought they needed it more than I do, mealybugs and all that business and too much happy sap. Only one bloom ever came out of a single growth. Two blooms in February from the Zymi's doll kiwi. Hey! <laughs> doing jumping jacks if I could, but I can't. So Nico Bejan or Bejan, but I'm thinking Nico Bejan. I want to dedicate my Siamese doll Kiwi to you, sir, over there in Bella Italia. Ciao, bello. Listen, Nico, since you showed up on my channel, it's just been a blast talking to you. I really appreciate it. I, 
so much fun to see your comments, your enthusiasm. Thank you for your emails, the communication that we have, the pictures you send me. Thank you ever, ever so much, Nico, for also your support here. All of this together is just, ah, it warms my heart. And when I say Venezia, sigh. <laughs> Nico, you're, you're very, very much appreciated. And I dedicate my Siamese doll Kiwi to you. I hope that you like her. I hope that you, this is sort of your kind of bloom as well. Don't know if you're into the spotted freckled kinds, but let me tell you, if you don't like the bloom so much, let me tell you about the fragrance. Woo! She is strong. I currently have the black pearl blooming in my dining room, smelling of ginger and all that good stuff. And this one comes right in with a freesia candy fragrance. Very, very strong. So the two of them, I feel like I'm in some kind of a little candy store and they live very close to each other. But these two blooms are comparison wise stronger than the 40 blooms I have on my black pearl. That is quite astounding. So if you're not into the spotted leopard type cattleyas and you like fragrances, then let me appease you with the fragrance. <laughs> let me just add something onto that. There's one thing different though about the winter growth and the fact she never opened up to do her name Kiwi justice. In summer, she will open up green with the burgundy spotting and then fade into yellow. And this time, as she opened up during the winter, it went straight to yellow. How long she's going to last, I do not know. In the summer, I don't have her around very long, probably about 10 days maximum. I mean, I'm considering that has to do with the heat. Let's see how long she lasts. She is now open approximately five days. So yeah. <laughs> Nico, grazie mille. And my Siamese dog, Kiwi, she blooms for you. Black is black because the color absorbs everything. There's no reflection. So this is a very difficult orchid for me to film and to do it justice for Andre Dumas and for KP. Two spikes, Andre Dumas, one is for you and KP, the other is for you. To say thank you ever, ever so much for your massive support on my channel. I love the fact that you know, both of you are almost on my comments daily. The interaction is intense. I enjoy it. I thank you. I can't express how grateful I am also to you two for your support. And here I am chasing around, trying to find a way to film this gorgeous black orchid because, you know, it's very difficult to get into the details of it if there's nothing that it reflects the light. But I think I've found an angle where we can now actually see the burgundy. And then if you get too much into the sun, it just absorbs everything. There is no reflection whatsoever. So this is, yeah, I'm happy with this, that we can actually see the contrast because honestly, these have now, well, they're still starting to open. They're not open fully down the rest of the spike. I still have buds just starting to open. Seeing as they are so intense, I can't, I tried to film indoors and then you get a reflection off the wall. I can't do them justice really. So I'm just gonna let them speak for themselves. But one thing I can tell you about is that they are still very, very fragrant. Very fragrant. This, this, this ginger is, it's taking over the lower part of my home. A very, very welcome ginger fragrance that I would rather not miss ever. You can see how gorgeous the light is now actually showing that there is more burgundy and then the unreflecting light, how black they are to the naked eye. I have nothing but love for this orchid. And for a first time bloom, I got 40 blooms. So Andre Dumas and KP, I'm not gonna pick who is getting who, I just want to say this orchid blooms for the two of you to say thank you ever, ever so much. And then there's a little add-on since the care collab, just to let you know that I saw that my bulb was shriveling. Let's see if we can get in a bit closer. 
You see those lines there? So that is the bulb that it is blooming off of. And in my Care Collab video, I said that there's not been any water and I'm watching the bulbs closely. And it's those lines that trigger me to give it some water. So all I did was flush the pot through twice with plain RO water, no fertilizer. It can take a couple of days to recover those wrinkles, but yeah, just taking the opportunity to do a quick update on when I started to give it a little bit of water, just so that it doesn't go all shriveled and depletes the energy for the new growth that I would like it to grow this season and then get more of these beauties. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. If you can get your hands on something like this, you will not regret it for sure. Thank you, André Dumas, and thank you, KP, for your support on my channel. These bloom for you. By contrast, <laughs> my Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga is white. <laughs> so there's a lot of reflection going on here, and there's a very stubborn blooming attribute to this orchid, which is a little bit frustrating because they bloom face down for whatever reason. But let me see how well I can do to get in there. If not, I shall start to do a pot Tetris in order to raise her up and we can have a pro proper look. First of all, let me just say, I'm going to be dedicating two spikes on this orchid because they have fully opened as opposed to others that are in the process of opening. And they go to Mary Crystal and Stefan Emmer. But I think I'm going to raise this orchid up. So I'll be right back. That's better, I think. This is a game of pot Tetris during this episode of Blooms for You. <laughs> yes, Stefan Emmel and Mary Crystal. And again, look what we see over there. I've just had a little once over on this orchid because I have been using garlic to protect the leaves. The garlic alcohol solution to protect the leaves from any pests that I normally fight with on these dendrobiums and I didn't see that one little mealybug over there. It's gone now. But yeah, I'm already getting new growths and I am really, really cautious with these new growths. I need the garlic to work. Back to Roy Tokonaga. Stefan Emmel and Mary Crystal, thank you so much. Despite having many other spikes, I think there's about 10 in here, in here dispersed. <laughs> I have two spikes that are fully open and they bloom for you to say thank you to you very, very much for being on my channel and for taking part and commenting. Stefan Emil, I saw you first on Blooms For You 10 episode. So here we are, episode 27, and I've got Roy Tokonaga blooming for you. Big contrast to the black orchid we just saw. This one doesn't have any fragrance and it is white and delicate, and it has some beautiful, beautiful markings that are clear to the eye from the top, as in outside of the orchid, as well as inside of the bloom. And to my understanding from last year when she bloomed, she is very, very long lasting. She will be around for a while, especially as the buds of the other spikes are now opening we're gonna be able to see a full bloom pretty soon. I hope that the camera picks up the detail here. Fighting the light. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> fighting the light, fighting how the orchid presents herself. <laughs> but I do want you to see just how pretty she is. Taking her up another floor, here we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love the chartreuse, and then I love the purple striations going into the lip. I love the little dots, even on the stem here of the bloom. These are also really cool orchids to watch as they are in bud, because there's a lot of interest while they are in bud. They take a long time to develop, I have to say, but as long as they last long as well, it's definitely, definitely worth it. But again, no fragrance. However, you can't have everything smelling the room up. You'd get completely confused. I enjoy these Latoria type dendrobiums very, very much, I have to say. Mary Crystal, Stefan Emmer, thank you 
for your support of my channel and I have my Roy Tokonago first two spikes blooming for you. Look what the wind is doing to my fire's leaves. Oh. Every year I have trouble with keeping these leaves. Oh well, they say it's just a plant, but what a shame. It's pretty brutal. I'm going to have to probably tie up my spikes, otherwise I will lose those, just like last year. Oh dear, what a shame. Oh, what? hey, look. Let me get to Cousin It. I want to show you something. I did say I was going to update because just a little side note for anybody who's interested before I do another video. When I was doing the garlic tincture infusion with alcohol, I started to spray around different orchids and I saw a lot of these ant eggs now on Cousin It as well. And honestly, I don't mind ants whatsoever. But just as an experiment, I thought, you know, on other orchids, I, it might bother me. But Cousin It is so dense, he needs a lot of help when it comes to making sure that other pests don't attack him. So I never interfere with the ants here on Cousin It. Let them tickle his head. But what I did do, there was quite a few right here on this stem that had planted themselves. And I thought, I'm going to just spray one area and see the effect of that one area. And look at that, it's clean. And these guys here, there's nothing to them, they're dead. So this is a quick visual update on the alcohol with garlic infusion. And it took three days and they sort of just fell off because they had died. And that's, just, that's great news. I know I killed a colony of ants, but there's plenty left. There's plenty left that he can work with. So yeah, just a quick update. That garlic alcohol thing, it was all up the stem of this pseudobulb and bloom and everything quite, quite exposed and covered full. It's gone. So that's great news. And I hope if somebody is already looking to see to do the same because it's the season, then let me tell you that so far, that is working and I'm really, really pleased. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. It's a bit blustery. <laughs> Getting blown away, sorry. But I hope that you could hear me above everything else. Have yourself a wonderful day, everybody. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.